What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. So, as you may or may not know, I'm a biologist for a private company here in South Texas. So, I'm going to do a little day in the life video for you. I think we're surveying four ponds today. Hopefully we can shock up some nice bass. Tell these folks what we can do to improve their pond. And we'll go from there. So, hopefully you'll see all the behind the scenes stuff that I do. I do making reports, getting the shock boat. I run the shock boat, as well as my helper, Kevin, my coworker, will be up front netting all the fish. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I wear many different hats at this company. So please stay tuned if you enjoy it. All right, so if you don't know, this is the rig that I'm running. It's a 16 foot shock boat, Smith Root. Got the truck, everything all put together. Gotta do some more things before we head out. Gonna gas up, make everything, make sure everything's all good, and we'll be on the road. All right, so we're now at the property right now. I'm not gonna disclose anything about where we go because most of them are private ranches. But now, Kevin, my helper, my coworker, is getting the boat all set up so when we get it launched in the water we're going to do a water test to see what we need to do what settings we need to put on our control box to effectively shock this pond now this pond's really clear probably a lot of tilapia in it you know depending on what we see if we always see big tilapia there's one option we can do if not we see bass you know we can take them to another uh, pond but we'll just see what we do with what we catch today so that's what we do we shock the pond get an estimate of how the fish populations look and see how we can improve either you can wrote known it and start over or we can try to stock some and save and salvage the pond the way that it is so we will go from there i'm going to get everything get the boat launched and we'll see you on the water when we do the water test all right so right now Gonna take my handy dandy water tester right here. Gonna test the water quality, see what parameters it has and what we need to do to get, to be the most effective at shocking. Fatty right there? Yeah, Fatty McGee. Get her out of the way. Look at that. Yeah, that's a pretty bass. Look I gotta out. get a picture of 
sure. Yeah. Really, really pretty. Right. Look how fast she is. Awesome. It's gonna be like that. I suck as a fisherman, and I never get big fish. I don't ever know how to hold them. 18 and a half. And 11 to 16, uh, five pounds, jeez. Dude, that is a stocky fish. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Thank you. of the day. Hopefully there's red fish in here. That's what I've heard. So let's see if we can shock them up. Hey, ready for Cut her on. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Don't cover all the tail. <laughs> I rarely ever catch big fish when I go fishing myself, so I don't know how to yeah. hold these up like a trophy fish. And Parker's got, been it, teaching. Yeah, you got it. You got them all, all the way out. You got a long arm. Long arm. Yeah.
Okay, so we're at the last pond of the day. I think I stepped in a fiery hill, but I'll give y'all a rundown for potential options after we're done with this pond. Okay, this is take two of what I recorded last night. I got all the way through talking, doing all my points, and forgot, forgot to turn my microphone on. So that's kind of what I do. And give me some pointers. What else would you like to see? I kind of wear many different hats around the property and around the business. So just let me know what you would like to see in future videos. You want to see more behind the scenes stuff. You know, disclaimer, I get paid to do these jobs. You know, running the shock boat and running reports and analyzing all the day is what I do. Making a video is always second to that. I'm not gonna do something where my priority is gonna be the video. If you're trying to do make a video gets in the way, then I'm putting the camera down. That's, that's not my job, that's not what I get paid to do. But let me know if there's other things or other shots you'd like to see in a, few, in a future video. I might make a few more videos doing this and just let me know if there's something you'd like to see or something you'd like to know, just put a comment down below. That would be great. I kinda have my process for videoing down, I would say. You know, it's really easy for me to just like, okay, all right, clip a GoPro on, boom, record, go off and do my business, head cam, click, recording, there you go. I don't really do a lot with the big camera just because it's a pain to lug around the boat and everything, and I just don't want to mess it up. So let me know what else you would like to see down below. Now, after I'm done shocking, after my coworker has helped me take out, take down all the data, length and weight of all the fish. That's when I come home and I see, I write a report about, okay, what are the property owner's goals for this pond? What does he want? Does he want to grow trophy bass? Does he want 10 pounders everywhere? Uh, does he want 10, you know, handful of 10 pounders and some eights in there? Or does he want, you know, you know, a good amount of five and six pounders? We can base whatever he wants to do off what his goals are and you know, kind of how much money, that's the big denominator, is how much money is someone willing to spend on a pond. So I'm gonna go through my notes from the surveys, you know, what my coworker and I saw when we were out shocking. Now, take in mind, you know, we don't net up every single fish that we see. We take a lot of mental notes for smaller sunfish, smaller forage fish, smaller bass that are recruit that, you know, so we can see there is recruitment into the population. So let's say for, here we go. The first, they call them tanks down here in South Texas. They're ponds. Originally, they said, oh, we have a bunch of giant tilapia that are taking over. Don't think there's a lot of bass more a lot of big bass, let's put it that way. And this pond was super clear. You can see 12 foot down, which is, you know, unheard of for a pond in South Texas and it's being pumped by well water. One thing we saw, we shocked up about, you know, 10 or 11 bass and I'll go in and I have a table where I can put all my length and uh, weight measurements in and it'll show us the standard weight. So what this bass should weigh at a given length and the relative weight which is how much its weight, its actual weight is comparative to its standard weight. So we'll see what we do there. Our biggest bass out of that pond was five pounds at 18 and a half inches. And I'll let you know what its relative weight is uh, right here. So the one thing we saw with all the bass, we thought we would have to drain it down, try to get all the tilapia out try to salvage as many bass as we could if there was a certain amount, like a low number of them that we actually caught and transport them to another pond. I couldn't justify this. There's other, there's definitely, you know, pond managers will say, okay, if you really want to know, 
just rotenone, which is a chemical that kind of kills off all that kills off all the fish in the pond. Start over. Then you can stock it right the first time. Then everything else is pretty self-sustaining. This pond's so big, I didn't think we could justify that. Our solution is we really didn't see a whole lot of smaller bait fish, smaller sunfish, smaller minnows forage fish and but we also didn't see any smaller tilapia the tilapia are the reason that that pond's so clear because they're eating up all the vegetation but we really didn't see any smaller tilapia you know to be worried about the synopsis being that okay these bass and uh, these bass are eating all these tilapia fry and all these smaller forage fish because now there's bigger sunfish as well but we're not seeing any recruitment we're not seeing any young of year same as for really the bass too we weren't see we didn't see a lot of recruitment we saw only a handful of what i call young of year Bass, so they respond the previous year. To combat this, we're suggesting adding a big influx of big influx of forage fish. You know, we can put in you know a bunch of four to six inch copper nose bluegill and red ear sunfish, and they'll spawn this year. At this moment now, when these fish are moving up to go spawn, they're eating way more, and that forage base doesn't look like it's all the way there as it should be. Dive in, influx a lot of a lot of that base. Get those fish eating well, uh, some fingerling bass in there as well. Get some of those growing because it can. This pond's big enough to support a lot more bass than what we saw. And keep in mind, we really, we whenever we go shock, we definitely don't see the, enti the entire population of fish out there. So that's what we're suggesting based off the what we saw when we were doing our survey. To our next pond, less than a quarter of an acre. It was tiny enough to get the boat launched and do a donut with it and you're done shocking. But what was really cool about this one is one, they had a fish feeder, but two, there were tons of massive bluegill in there. And that's, you know, probably thanks to that feeder that they have in there. We didn't really see too many other minnows, but we saw a lot of sizes of bluegill and there was a handful of decent bass in there. I think our biggest one was uh, four pounds. Yeah four pounds out of that one. We shocked up a bunch of smaller bass. Now for this one, I'm gonna to talk to the property manager because I think it would be awesome to do a just trophy bluegill pond. Trophy sunfish, trophy, you know, just red ears and copper nose bluegill because there were some absolute slabs in there too. You know, one to two pound sunfish in there and they were looking ready to go and ready to breed. They were just big chested whenever we were shocking them up. So I think that would be really cool. But the only issue with it is that the pond's so small that it can probably get really crowded. So they're gonna have to harvest, e either harvest a bunch more bluegill or they're gonna have to raise their water level up. Cause it, it was in just a small hole where it could definitely be a one acre pond if they filled it up the whole way. Onto the third pond that we saw. This was what they called their redfish pond. They, when we stock redfish, you know, we'll take redfish from a saltwater hatchery, get them acclimated to freshwater, and we'll stock them out and they'll live in freshwater ponds. When we stock them, they're small. They're seven to 10 inches, maybe smaller when we usually get, or, you know, usually smaller when we get them. So we were gonna put them into the main pond and the guy said that they're already in there, but we didn't shock any but we, they didn't put too many in there because they didn't want the bass to eat them, the big bass to eat them. So they put them all into this one like kind of quarter acre pond and put them on a food regiment, you know, fish feeder and some sunfish and some gizzard shad in there to really just bulk them up. Cause you know, even for such a small area, adding, adding a fish feeder at less than be able to be, to grow big in that sort of environment. But we shocked up about 25 redfish that were 20 plus inches, each one. And so that's funny, the property manager was saying that property manager, because I deal with more property managers than the actual owners of the properties itself. Property manager said, yeah, the owner can't catch any of the fish in here. That don't, he doesn't think there's any redfish. Well, prove you wrong. Most of the time you just, the clients don't even know how to fish for them. This is the big deal. They think all these fish are just gonna eat worms, eat worms and bobbers, and that's gonna be it. No, you gotta still learn how to fish for them like every other fish that's out there. 
So most likely we're gonna take some redfish out of this pond and put them into that front pond, into the first pond, the big pond. Like uh, for the first pond, we're also gonna implement a, just any giant tilapia you see, get it out of there. The less of those, the better. Because once they get so big, they don't have a mass, but they don't have any predator, uh, predators. Because they can get way too big for a bass to eat. Same with sunfish, anything else. You know, a bass will eat whatever it can fit in its mouth. And, you know, the lucky survivors can grow really big, like the one in the video. So that's the kind of the plan for that one. Not too much I can really say, since they have a feeder and there's already some decent amount of bait fish in there. Uh, not too much in the ways of stocking, I would say. Probably add, you know, little more minnows and some smaller sunfish, but they got enough breeder sunfish in there to stay everything in check there. So we'll see one, if we move more of those fish to another pond, see what changes with it. Now to the last pond. This pond was interesting because it was like a tenth of an acre. It was so small. I'm not lying when I said we can just put the boat in and I did a donut with it and I shocked the whole pond. Like that, it was that small, but it was about, you know, eight feet, eight feet deep. So it was just a hole and it was really clear, it had a bunch of hydrilla and coontail and other, and American pond we didn't, keeping everything really, keeping everything really clear in it. And we could see bass, and, you know, there was a three pounder in there. And our biggest one we shocked up was three pounds in this pond. This is interesting because this pond does have a feeder. It can support more and bigger fish. But from what we saw, it's pretty self-sustaining, but they're not gonna grow a eight pounder in there. Maybe a five, one or two fives, but it's mainly gonna be, you know, and maybe a handful of three pounders, but everything else is going to be smaller. There's just not much we can kind of do. If they're wanting to have a really big bass in there, they're gonna have to take out every 10 to 14 incher that's in there just so they can have that bass in that pond. Not too much going on there. It was actually a really nice looking pond. Saw lots of different sizes of fish, lots of forage for bass and the predators to feed on. That's kind of what I do. I take all the data that we have, all the data we have, analyze it, say, okay, what? how can we make this pond even better? Use it to what the landowner wants. Uh, what, you know, what is their goal for it? How much are they wanting to spend on this pond? Because I've been, I've been on some ponds, you know, where we'll go out for a day and we'll shock maybe four or five ponds, you know, because we don't shock. Down in South Texas, we don't have, you know, just abundance of landowners with 10 to 20 acre lakes. That's just not what we manage mostly. It's going to be one to four acres is our kind of like our, it's kind of like that's one to four acres is kind of like our standard. We don't deal with just giant lakes down here so they're kind of in a way the formula is there for them to be managed easy but it's also more critical to be wary of harvesting harvesting x amount of fish a year so that you can grow those bigger fish because in those large reservoirs yeah they have a lot more environment to grow in there in a small pond all that competition's in an even tighter circle. So you have to manage that and nitpick it really easy, uh, really strategically. But either way, that's what I do. I really hope you found this, you know, informa this information useful. You know, if you have, you know, any questions about this kind of stuff, shoot me a comment, find me on social media. I have everything, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, I'm gonna be doing some videos on there too. Lots of, you know, fun stuff. But also follow Herman's Fish Farm on Instagram and Facebook, because that's the company I work for. I'm gonna be hitting up really the social media and doing lots of promo for the company as well. And they're really great people. And if you're in South Texas, hit us up. We'll get all your pond stuff squared away. And maybe I can come out there and survey your ponds. But if there's any other things you would like to see, please, comment down below and subscribe. If you want more cool videos and pond management tips, I'd really appreciate it. Definitely gonna be trying to incorporate biology and conservation and what I do into the channel as well. By the way, I hope you enjoyed it. Try something new, get outdoors, peace.